ています。Non-Invasive Ventilation and Overview Part 2. Use of NIV, Dr. Jalal Mohsen Adeen MBBS DTCD. FCPS, Pulmonology, Introduction. The use of non-invasive ventilation has markedly increased. And it has now become an integral tool in the management of both acute and chronic respiratory failure, in both the home setting and in the critical care unit. Appropriate use of NIV reduces the need for invasive ventilation and its complications, example VAP, sepsis, tracheostomy, GI, bleeding, DVT. Furthermore, it may be used on a long-term basis in people who cannot breathe independently as a result of a chronic condition, example motor neuron disease. Introduction Continue by level NIV reduces the sensation of dyspnea, work of breathing, the need for immediate intubation hospital length of stay and improves survival. Indications for non-invasive positive pressure ventilation 1, strong evidence, level A, A. Acute exacerbations of COPDB to facilitate weaning in COPDC. Acute cardiogenic pulmonary edema, use of CPAP, D. Immunocompromised patients 2, reasonable evidence, level B, A. Postoperative respiratory failure B. Asthma C. Not intubating patients D. Obstructive sleep apnea or obesity hypoventilation 3, cohort. Series, case reports, level C, A. During bronchoscopy B. Cystic fibrosis C restrictive disorders d upper airway obstruction e acute respiratory distress syndrome 1 acute hypercapnic exacerbation of copd the most common indication for non-invasive ventilation is for acute exacerbation of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease the decision to commence niv usually in the emergency department depends on the initial response to medication bronchodilators given by nebulizer, and the results of arterial blood gas tests. Many people with COPD have chronically elevated CO2 levels with metabolic compensation, but NIV is only indicated if the CO2 is acutely increased to the point that the acidity levels of the blood are increased, pH and LT, 7.35. However, there is no lower pH value below which NIV should not be used. But the more acidotic the patient, the greater the risk of failure of NIV. If pH and LT, 7.30, the risk of endotracheal intubation and death is substantially increased, and NIV is strongly advised. Settings of NIV and choice of interface in COPD patient, oxygen should be given to a target saturation of 88 to 92 percent during spontaneous breathing and niv epap should usually be set at 5 cm h2o and rarely increases above 8 cm h2o ipap should start at 10 cm h2o and be increased according to comfort and response to 15 cm h2o and then if possible to 20 cm h2o Backup rate should set 15 breath per minute. As patient with an AECOPD generally mouth breathe, an oro-nasal mask is the interface of choice. Use of NIV in miscellaneous conditions of COPD. Patient. Research has shown that for people who have COPD and higher carbon dioxide levels, Regular nighttime BIPAP use can improve quality of life and breathlessness, and increase long-term survival. Coma, which was previously considered as a contraindication, it has shown. Outcome with NIV is as good as in other patient group. How to understand good outcome. An improvement in pH and a fall in respiratory rate are markers of a likely successful outcome from N. 
IV Similarly, an improvement in Glasgow Coma Scale and APACHE scores is predictive of a favorable outcome. 2. Acute hypercapnic respiratory failure with chest wall deformity are neuromuscular disease in people with chest wall deformity or neuromuscular disease, NIV may be commenced if the CO2 level is elevated even if it has not yet caused acidosis or if there is tachypnea and high work of breathing. Vital capacity, measured by spirometry, is used to determine a need for breathing support. Usefulness and contraindications of NIV and NMD The combined use of NIV and cough assist strategies in acute ventilator failure due to NMD like Duchenne. Muscular dystrophy, spinal atrophy reduce the need for invasive ventilation and produces better outcomes except in few contraindications. Example profound bulbar weakness, aspiration, rapidly. Progressive hypoxemic respiratory failure, multisystem failure and coma. Usual settings in NMD. It is better to start at a fairly low IPAP example 10 cm H2O, with an EPAP of 4 cm H2O. Increase IPAP settings by 2 to 5 cm H2O according to PACO2 level and comfort or increase E. PAP by 1 to 2 cm H2O to a maximum of 7 cm H2O to recruit lung volume and prevent or manage atelectasis. If the above measures cannot correct ABG and respiratory distress then volume assured by level device example IVAPS or AVAPS, average volume assured pressure support can be used. 3. Obesity Hypoventilation Syndrome, OHS, Obesity Hypoventilation Syndrome, OHS, and Quat, Pequikian Syndrome and Quat Winking Face exists when an obese individual, body mass index, BMI, and GT, 30 kg per meter 2, resulting alveolar hypoventilation, arterial carbon dioxide tension, PACO, 2, and GT, 45 mm Hg, which cannot be attributed to other conditions, e.g., neuromuscular disease. Obesity hypoventilation syndrome, OHS, may cause acute hypercapnic respiratory failure. The criteria for commencing NIV are similar to those for COPD, decreased pH, elevated CO2. Settings of BIPAP in OHSEPAP, start at 6 cm H2O and titrated by 2 cm H2O to upper airway obstruction, OSA. Usual setting. 8 to 10 cm H2O IPAP, start at 16 cm H. 2O and titrate to obtain adequate chest wall excursion to obtain adequate VT, 8 to 10 milliliters per kilogram. Usual settings of IPAP is 18 to 24 centimeters H2O target pH should be more than 7.35. Other settings include provide adequate O2 if SpO2 less than 88 millimeters of Hg, backup respiratory rate 16 to 24 breaths per minute. Inspiratory time 1.2 to 1.4 second. 4. Acute on chronic hypercapnic respiratory. Failure due to non-COPD obstructive lung disease. A. Asthma. Despite aggressive medical management with supplemental oxygen and pharmacotherapy, some patients fail to improve and require ICU admission and mechanical ventilation. In this case, if the condition allows, NIV is preferable to endotracheal intubation, ETI, and invasive mechanical ventilation, IMV. Acute. Severe asthma may cause AHRF, acute hypercapnic respiratory failure, when it is labeled. End quat. Near fatal asthma and quat. It is suggested that NIV is only used in an intensive care. Unit setting where further deterioration can be managed immediately. Some people with chronic asthma develop fixed airways disease that resembles COPD, and NIV may be used in that 
setting b cystic fibrosis during an exacerbation niv can be beneficial the excessive amount of sputum does not seem to be a major problem during an exacerbation niv might even aid in sputum mobilization niv has become a therapy worth trying during acf exacerbation with acute on chronic respiratory failure in order to prevent intubation c non-cf bronchiectasis n IV might be used in selected cases with less severe ARF due to bronchiectasis exacerbation, in which it might prevent invasive mechanical ventilation, IMV, and shorten the length of ICU stay. But NIV failure rates are high in more severe ARF5, acute on chronic hypercapnic respiratory failure due to interstitial lung disease, at late stage, relative hypoventilation may lead to hypercapnia on top of the usually worsened hypoxemia. NIV can be an effective treatment to prevent ETI in patients with severe disease. Results seem to be better with non-IPFIL. D. High FiO2 must be provided to achieve adequate oxygenation. NIV might be used as a palliative measure in patients with do not intubate orders to reduce dyspnea sensation. 6. Acute. Hypoxemic respiratory failure, non-severe ARDS, excluding pulmonary edema, in acute. Hypoxemic respiratory failure, NIV can improve oxygenation and can relieve dyspnea by reducing the work of breathing in non-severe ARDS and also decrease rate of ventilator-associated pneumonia, VAP. As there is a high rate of NIV failure in patients with acute hypoxemic respiratory failure, intensive monitoring is required and prompt intubation should be done if signs of NIV failure develop. 7. Acute cardiogenic pulmonary edema CPAP or bilateral positive airway. Pressure should be used in patients not responding to standard medical therapy, to avoid invasive ventilation. One death can be avoided for every 14 ACPO patients treated with NIV when to start NIV in ACPO respiratory rate in GT, 25 breaths per minute, PAO2, FIO2 and LT, 200 mm Hg or S, PO2 and LT, 90%. How to start NIV in ACPO Use an oronasal mask start with CPAP at 10 cm H2. Oh in case of intolerance to CPAP, change to BiPAP, start with EPAP 5 cm H20 and IPAP 15 cm H2. Oh, if patients have not started to improve within 10 to 20 minutes then EPAP or IPAP, EPAP may need to be increased. Expect maximal benefit after one hour. When weaning is done. Weaning. From NIV is done if respiratory rate and LT, 25 breaths per minute and SPO2 and GT, 95% in room air. How? Weaning is done? Stepwise reduction, 2 cm H2O, in IPAP, EPAP and stepwise reduction, 10%. In FIO2. When will you consider NIV failure? Glasgow Coma Scale in GT. 13. Respiratory rate in GT. 40 breath per minute or PACO2 increase of 5 mm of HG. CPAP and BiPAP both significantly decrease ET. I and mortality, although the evidence for mortality reduction is stronger for CPAP. 8. NIV in. The perioperative period, respiratory failure may develop after major surgery. NIV may be used in this setting during the recovery period. Perioperative cases most likely to benefit from NIV are high-risk patients with COPD, cardiac failure and obesity and those undergoing high-risk procedures like cardiothoracic, thoraco-abdominal and abdominal surgery, and helpful to prevent Postoperative pulmonary complications, PPCS. NIV may be beneficial for preventive in.
therapeutic purpose for established ARF after surgery to avoid endotracheal intubation and related complications. Nasal CPAP is recommended in OSA patients before and after surgery, especially immediately after extubation. The use of NIV before and after lung surgery for COPD patients has been shown to prevent lung function loss, reduce atelectasis and decrease hospital length of stay. Preventive indications of NIVA patients at risk for PPCS, postoperative pulmonary complication, or ARF, example, obese, OSA, chronic lung disease, CCF, B, major, surgery, example, thoraco-abdominal surgery, abdominal surgery, cardiac surgery and bariatric surgery, therapeutic indications of NIVA postoperative ARFB postoperative pulmonary Edema C postoperative airway obstruction usually patient is managed with NIV in a head elevated bed at above 30. The settings of NIV should be as follows 1. NIV should have a backup rate. 2. Inspiratory trigger should be minus 1 to minus 2 cm H2O3. Initial PSV, IPAP, EPAP might be 4 to 5 cm H2O4. Expiratory time 40 to 60 percent of one breath cycle. 5. Initial EPAP level might be 3 to 6 cm H2O with optimum FiO2 to maintain optimal SpO2. PSV and EPAP are gradually increased until dyspnea is relieved. If maximal pressure, IPAP equals PSEPAP. In GT, 25 cm H2O is required without leakage or arterial blood gas and pH fail to improve should be considered for invasive mechanical ventilation. Arterial blood gas should be checked within 1 to 2 hour. 9. To facilitate the weaning process. In those who have undergone mechanical ventilation on the intensive care unit and are considered at high risk of recurrence, NIV may be used to prevent this. In those who were ventilated for hypercapnic respiratory failure, NIV may be used to facilitate the weaning process. NIV had a consistently positive effect on mortality and ventilator-associated pneumonia as well as other relevant outcomes, without increasing the risk of weaning failure or reintubation. 10. Obstructive sleep apnea nasal CPAP therapy is the most effective treatment for OSA, and it has become the standard of care for this condition. It is also effective for treating mixed apneas and some central apneas. In those who have OSA, poor response to CPAP despite good adherence may be an indication to switch to BiPAP. 11. NIV4. Endoscopic, bronchoscopic, procedures. Hypoxemic patients and to a lesser extent, hypercapneic. Patients may be at increased risk for complications during or after bronchoscopy as one, surfactant. Will be lost promoting lung collapse during collection of BAL2, strong suctioning through the bronchoscope may promote lung collapse. APAO2, FIO2 value and LT, 200 mm of HG, and LT, 26.66 kPa, is a reasonable cutoff value for the application of NIV, but clinical evaluation is equally important. The first choice sedative for this purpose is propofol. If SPO2 cannot be increased, to at least 90% despite appropriate PEEP and high FiO2, BAL should not be performed without endotracheal intubation. A modified full face mask with synthetic cylinder sealed by disposable cap can allow the introduction of the bronchoscope without increasing the amount of leak. There are some elbow connector that allow introduction of the bronchoscope during NIV in general during Procedure PEEP may be 5 to 8 cm H2O and pressure support 10 to 15 cm H2O individual.
Titration of pressure should be performed based on SpO2 and respiratory distress. FiO2 should be increased to 1.0 just before bronchoscopy and titrated to maintain SpO2 and GT, 95%. 12. NIV. In respiratory pandemic, non-invasive ventilation has been suggested in the treatment. For coronavirus disease 2019, COVID-19, where shortages of invasive ventilation equipment and facilities may arise. The risk of poorly fitting masks emitting aerosols can require full protection gear for caregivers. NIV may be helpful in early cases of acute respiratory infection. To avoid the need for intubation and invasive ventilation, early application of NIV can reduce mortality but may be unsuitable in rapidly progressive acute lung injury, severe pneumonia and multi-organ failure in acute respiratory pandemics. The most favorable outcome from NIV is seen with 1. Low Initial Acute Physiology and Chronic Health Evaluation APACHE. 2. No requirement for vasopressor. 3. Fewer radiological quadrants affected by consolidation. There are case reports of successful NIV use in pregnant patients with H1N1 infections. Mortality was lower in those who initially received NIV compared with those who were initially intubated. Higher APACHE score, evidence of liver damage and CNS symptoms are associated with increase risk of NIV failure. Bilevel ventilators are preferable, with use of a non-vented mask with a high-efficiency filter on the exhalation port, a double limb circuit is advantageous. Negative pressure rooms should be used if available. Full face mask or helmet masks are preferable. than nasal mask as it causes mouth leaks. 13. NIV in palliative care and at the end of Life dyspnea is the main symptom to palliate. In the chronic setting, NIV may improve dyspnea. Quality of life and exercise tolerance. In the acute setting, NIV may be used to relieve dyspnea and potentially treat a reversible factor of ARF, example, pulmonary edema or infection. Consider NIV if one or more of the following is present 1 tachypnea, respiratory rate, and GT. 25 breaths per minute, 2 considerable dyspnea, Borg score and GT, 4, 3 signs of increased respiratory, muscle efforts, 4 sensation of, hunger for air, consider discontinuing NIV if one or more of, the following is present 1 the patient refuses to continue 2 intolerance to the interface of, ventilation 3 impaired mental status, 14. NIV in immunocompromised host Recent European, American guidelines recommend non-invasive ventilation, NIV, as a first-line therapy to manage acute hypoxemic respiratory failure in immunocompromised related opportunistic infections. Pulmonary damage secondary to malignancy, drug-related pulmonary toxicity, or unidentified causes. In immunocompromised patients may be due to advances in chemotherapy and bone marrow and organ transplantation etc. Immunocompromised patients have particularly high mortality rates when they require intubation. Applying NIV in immunocompromised patients can avoid side effects directly related to endotracheal intubation and IMV, such as ventilator-associated pneumonia. Excessive sedation, upper airway injuries and tracheomalacia, thus it can lead to a better clinical outcome. Thank you all end of part minus 2 non-invasive ventilation and overview part 2, use of NIV, learning pulmonology.